Good evening. Welcome to the faith community of St. Mary St. Peter's. We'd like to welcome all who honor us by visiting with us tonight. We also wish everyone a very Merry Christmas. This Mass is for the solemn Mass of Christmas, and the focus for this Mass is there is good news and rejoicing as light has entered the world with the birth of our Savior. Our Mass is being offered for all the people of the parish. Our celebrant and homeless for this Mass is Father Hearn, assisted by Deacon Nick Rocher. Please stand now as we greet our celebrant, Father Hearn, and sing our opening hymn. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here on this Christmas Eve as we celebrate this great Mass of Christmas. And we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. That we might pray together. Let us first ask God's mercy and his presence here with us. Lord Jesus. Prince of Peace, you were born in Bethlehem of Judea. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you are reborn in us on this day of gladness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you will come again, born on the clouds of heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us pray. O oh God, who have made this most sacred night radiant with the splendor of the true light, grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven. We, your people, ask this as we pray through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwell in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing. As they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that has burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster you have smashed as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burnt as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us. Upon his shoulder dominion rests. They name him Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to God. announces salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. They shall exalt before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all, 
and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we await the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people as his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord in those days a decree went out from caesar augustus that the whole world should be enrolled this was the first enrollment when quinarius was governor of syria all went out to be enrolled each to his own town and joseph too went up from galilee from the town of nazareth to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. While they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, do not be afraid for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you who is Christ and Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there will be a multiple of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you all for being here to fill the church on this glorious night, this very special night. If I realized so many would be here tonight to fill the church, I would arrange to take up three collections tonight. <laughs> Christmas certainly is a time of year that seems so naturally to encourage us to share greetings of peace, love, and most of all, joy. Revealed in the tender hugs we often share, certainly, with one another. We share these expressions of mutual affection as a way of showing our love and certainly support for one another, and as a way certainly to grow in relationship with one another. This is a very special time, a very special night. There's something about the words and gestures that we exchange at Christmas that reveals a sort of vulnerability that we might not otherwise show at other times of the year. The vulnerability and love, certainly, that we so easily show one another at Christmas mirrors certainly 
our own vulnerability and love for us in the great mystery of the Incarnation, the birth of Christ for all of us. Each year at Christmas, we recall that the Son of God has embraced us in all humanity in a very tender way, yet powerful way. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, in the, in the manger, God certainly came to us with a human face. He became human for each of us. In the incarnation, the all-powerful, certainly, God of the universe embraced the fragile human race as a tiny, vulnerable baby. In a manner beyond the power of speech, God certainly shared a greeting of peace with us on that first Christmas night and drew us into a warm, loving embrace. At Christmas each year, we remember that God not only chose to embrace each of us, but that he wanted to do so. He wanted to be with us. After centuries of holy men and women, of prophets, priests, and kings, and their unceasing efforts to speak and act on behalf of God, God made a very definite statement, not acting remotely or from a distance, but rather coming in person to show how much he desires a very personal relationship with each and every one of us, how much he truly loves us, that he became one like us. Just as the tiny child, Christ child, was embraced and lovingly placed in the manger, that same tiny Christ child offered a loving embrace of the entire human race, showing in his tender love a better way for us to live as sons and daughters of God. In the quiet beauty of Christmas, we are reminded that Jesus chose to embrace our human frailty and to begin the process of lifting each of us heavenward. In time, his embrace would certainly cause him to take upon himself even our faults and our shortcomings. In order to do for us what we could never do for ourselves, be our savior. In so doing, Jesus encourages us to embrace certainly a better way of living by this night to be mindful of the fact that we can live better than we have the past year, a holy way of living, a way that leads to life in its fullness, and certainly a way to realize in the midst of the miracle that is Christmas, Jesus teaches us the fullness of life comes through embracing a way of living that makes us deeply open and vulnerable to the love and grace of God calling us to be present to one another, calling us to love one another. Let us go forth on this Christmas night to be attentive to his grace of love and peace and his call to love one another. May we realize on this night how blessed we are that our Savior became one like us to embrace us fully and make us more like him in peace and joy. Amen. It is with the marvelous gift of faith that we journey each day, and so let us make our profession of faith by praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate Christ's birth, let us express our needs and the needs of the world and call upon the Lord, who comes to us in the form of a helpless child. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For God's holy church, that we may be light for those who walk in darkness, peace for those in the midst of conflict, 
and joy for those who are troubled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For leaders of governments around the world, that they may look after the welfare of all their citizens, especially the poor and powerless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all those who share in the profits from the commerce of the holiday season, that they may find ways to spread the joy to those who can least afford to participate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who, like the Holy Family, have no home in which to sleep, that they may be welcomed to a place that is safe and warm. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who, like the shepherds, must labor in adverse conditions and during difficult hours, that they may be treated fairly and kindly. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all of us here today, for our families, friends, and neighbors, that this holy season of Christmas may be filled with peace, hope, and joy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For healing of all of our sick, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all of our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Glorious and gracious God, we rejoice in the gift of your Son, whose birth into the world broke the barrier between heaven and earth. May the prayers we make here on earth be heard by you in heaven and graciously answered through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
light. Grant, we pray, that we who have known the mysteries of his light on earth may also delight in his gladness in heaven, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember all of the deceased members of this parish and remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light 
of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, St. Peter and the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. On this sacred night, at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with each of you. Thank you. Please extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, 
but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Amen.
on behalf certainly of all of our staff here at St. Mary St. Peter's and especially on behalf of Deacon Nick Rozier, Mother Don Carlin, Monsignor Kennedy, and myself, I want to wish everyone a very happy and holy Christmas and a very wonderful blessing as we move into a new year. And it's a real blessing for me for the first time tonight um, in a long, long time, I was able to give out communion here for the, at the altar rather than have someone take my place. So I'm beginning to heal thanks to all of your prayers. As you know, I have a new shoulder and hopefully maybe a new head to watch out where I'm going in the future <laughs> as we stand now for our closing prayer. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, our God, that we, who are gladdened by participation in the feast of our Redeemer's Nativity, may through an honorable way of life become worthy of union with him who is our Lord and Savior and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with each of you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. And I'd like to thank Jack Kemp, our organist in the choir, for a beautiful presentation of wonderful Christmas music tonight. <laughs> and just a reminder to everyone, we're here every week. Do come back. Have a great evening, everyone. Our closing hymn is found in the Missalette, number 211, Joy to the World.